Hello everyone, welcome to episode 4 of my series Quick Tutorials. In this tutorial, we continue episode 4, Infinite Terrain Generation, and have the terrain unload and follow the player. Picking up from where we left off from, in episode 4, there's a few things that we'll need to do. The first thing that we need to do is create a new class called Tile. Now this class will hold some information, such as the timestamp of when this object was created and the tile object itself. Now that we have a float C timestamp and a game object tile object, we need a way to be able to pass these values and we'll be doing this using the tile constructor. Now that we have our tile class created, there's a few new additions in our generate terrain method. Before we enter our nested for loops, we need to define a new hash table called new tiles. We also need to create a float called C time, which will be our time reference. For our C time, we'll use the real time since startup. Now, before we enter our nested for loops, we can remove our block list list. As for this example, we won't be using it. Now, within our nested for loops, we can go into the if statement. In this if statement, where we instantiate our cube instance, we need to define a new tile object. Now, since we set up a constructor for our tile class, we need to pass in the timestamp and the object itself. For the timestamp, we'll use C time, and for the tile object, we'll use the cube instance. Now, within the hash table, instead of passing the cube instance itself, the game object, we're going to pass in the tile as the value. So we remove the cube instance and we pass our tile reference, which is T. Now for this if statement, we need an else statement. If our cube pass hash table does contain the key of position, we need to update our C timestamp of the tile object. Since a hash table will return a type of object, we need to cast that object into a tile. We can do this by specifying our casting type, which in this case is a tile, passing in our hash table and we need to pass in a key. Now in this instance, our key is our position. Now we can say C timestamp is equal to the current time. Now that's it for our nested for loops. If we exit out, we need to create a for each loop. We say for each tile T in our QPOS the values collection, we need to check which of these tiles do not match our current timestamp. So we can say if t dot timestamp does not equal our current timestamp, then what we want to do is destroy the object. Otherwise, we need to add this tile to our new tiles hash table. So we can say new tiles. Oh, typo. New tiles dot add passing in the game object and the tile itself. Now there's two other things that we need to do outside of this for each loop. Firstly, we need to reassign our cube positions to be our new tiles. So we can say QPOS equals to new tiles. And lastly, we need to reassign our starting position. So we can say start pos equals to player.transform.position. Now let's save and head over into Unity. Now in Unity, the first thing that we need to do is make sure that our voxel script contains all of our references, such as the tile itself and a reference to the player. Now, if we click play, 
we can see that the terrain follows the player. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I apologize for not uploading sooner. If you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below or even better, join our Discord channel. Links as always in the description below. If you found this tutorial useful or helpful, please consider liking, commenting and subscribing. This has been Russ and I'll catch you next time.